every step that we make in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, church, I don't know about you if you're excited to be here, but I'm excited to be here. I believe God wants to touch you today. I believe God wants to do a miracle in your life today. And uh, we're going to continue on and just our, our, our worship service here today. But, you know, we want to take a moment, and this is a, an important part of our service, is that as a family... We need to reach out to each other. There may be somebody sitting right next to you who you don't know that is hurting, and maybe they need a hug, or maybe they need a high five, or, or whatever. But I just pray that you would just take a moment, greet somebody, and give them a hug, high five, handshake, and just tell them that God is on your side. newborn with this week's updates. Widow's Tea meets March 19th at 1 p.m. in the box with June Stevens. The Laugh Breakfast is March 25th at 9 a.m. at Seven Hills Golf Course. And the Lunch Bunch will be meeting next Sunday, March 24th at Chili's. If you plan to attend, please pick up a Chili script card following service. The Women's Ministry is having a tamale fundraiser March 24th following service. If you'd like to pre-order your tamales, they're $20 a dozen. Please see Linda Miller at the gazebo. The Women's Ministry Brilliance Conference is coming soon. 
April 19th through the 21st with guest speaker Jeannie Mayo at First Assembly of God in Santa Ana, Orange County. Visit SoCalNetwork.org or please see Linda at the gazebo to register. Our youth are sponsoring the first annual San Jacinto Assembly Fine Arts Golf Tournament. This event will take place on Saturday, April 6th at 1 p.m. at Golden Era Golf Course. All proceeds go to our youth for fine arts. Please see Pastor Nick to register. And lastly, our Easter volunteer opportunities are scheduled for Tuesday, March 26th at 6.30 p.m. in the box. We will be stuffing Easter eggs for the kids' ministry. Then on Thursday, March 28th, we'll have another serving opportunity with an Easter craft preparation. If you'd like to help, please see Donna Johnson. Your participation is always appreciated. Thank you, church, for tuning in to this week's SJA Updates. Have a blessed week. Hi, I'm Donda Cox. I'm pleased to announce SGA's newest support group for those affected by bipolar disorder. We would like to invite you, your significant other, and anyone else affected by this disorder. Our program is a faith-based care group and will be dedicated to education and support. The cost is $10, which covers your manual and teaching materials. We start April 1st at 7 p.m. in the We Care building. If you have any questions, please see me at the gazebo after church services. Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to see you. Yeah, what a difference a week makes. At this time last week, people were still rolling in going, am I, am I really late for church? And uh, it is hard to recover from losing an hour of sleep, isn't it? If you feel like you've been chasing the week all week, right? Yeah, it kind of feels like it. So today is kind of like our reset button, all right? And uh, that's what we're doing this morning. All right, I want to call a very special friend down to come stand with me. Linda, why don't you come this way? She really gets excited about these types of things. And um, Linda has served here in this church for about 100 years. And... Uh, and um, she, she's still serving in some capacities, but she's, she's taken some steps back in this past year because she is pursuing her nursing degree. And, um, good morning, Linda Lou. How are you? Yeah, I'm going to let you hold that. And um, when I got here about four years ago, um, Linda was, uh, for me, the epitome of what uh, a servant attitude was. Uh, you taught me an incredible amount about what it is to serve. And I wasn't used to having a whole bunch of people around me. I'm pretty self-sufficient. And you would come in there and go, stop doing that. And I'd go, what? And you'd go, that. I'd go, okay. And off it would go. And I didn't know what you did with it, but it was gone. And, um, but you've taken a big step, and we're so proud of you. And just why don't you share with these folks this morning? It's, on. it's It's been such an honor. Um, from the time that I came in, um, I, I prayed my way into here because I just love the staff. I love the church. I, I love to serve. And so God allowed me to be a part of this, this place and of the people and allowed me to serve with the highest standard of excellence because that's how I show my love. I don't like being out here in front of everybody. I nope. like being behind the scenes and just doing what I do best, and that's, that's serving you. Um, that's serving the pastor and serving this amazing staff. I don't know if you guys realize how blessed you are to have such an amazing staff who loves you, who pours into you, and they're passionate about it. And it's been such an honor to be a part of that and to be allowed to be here for such a time. And for God to move me on to one of my other passions, and that is the medical field. I've, I've wanted that all my life. And so it was time. Mm -hmm. But it was probably one of the hardest things to do is make the decision to step back. That's right. It was very hard. We, we cried a lot about this, didn't we? And you're <laughs> still crying about it. That's all right. <laughs> um, this is a, such a godly man. He has taught me much grace. And he gives much grace, and that's only because of what God's done in him. And he's brought that to this church, he's brought that to this staff, and he's brought this to you. So, thank you. <laughs> There's grace for you. 
<laughs> it's, it's been an honor. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. Huh? <laughs> All right. Um, now she's going to go and do what she does on Sundays. She, she comes to church on Saturday nights, and then she serves in a, in a capacity with us on Sundays. And so she's not going anywhere. She's just continuing to serve. But we just wanted to uh, take a few moments to honor her this morning. We we're also we we're going to honor Pam this morning. Pam got hurt a number of months ago. And, and Pam is responsible for keeping this place ship shape. And she's been doing that for a number of years. Uh, she had kind of a freak accident back in October, really, really messed up her knee, and um, about two weeks ago, she just came in and said, you know, I don't know if I can, she been, she's been on disability this whole time, I don't know if I can continue in this capacity, and so she's taken a step back, and we wanted to honor her today, but she's sick. She woke up with what everybody else has been waking up with the last several months, and so we'll get a chance to uh, honor her in the weeks uh, coming ahead. All right, this young lady writes this, uh, she's... She had given up a job in her late 20s. Uh, she was working in a big city in a firm. And she had a corporate job and she was doing quite well, but she felt the call of God upon her life. And of all places, she ended up at a campground, a Christian campground. And that was okay when you go to Wisconsin in the summer. But when you're from, from a warmer climate and all of a sudden fall comes around and then winter comes, how many of you have experienced a Wisconsin winter, right? Wisconsin's so cold, if you chatter your teeth, there's a good possibility that you're going to shatter some of those teeth, all right? That's how cold it can be in Wisconsin. Anyways, it got to being winter, and she recognized that this girl was not ready for winter and didn't know how to really get there, and the snow started to fall, and she realized she had no boots. And she was working now at a campground that paid her about 90% less than what she had earned prior. And so she decided that since her, her whole journey was a, a step of faith, that she would just pray and ask that the Lord would send her money from maybe a friend or two that then she could go out and buy some boots. So she prayed that day, and wouldn't you know it, that that day in the mail, three letters came in. And so she opened the first one, didn't even really read it, just turned it upside down. We do this on our birthday, right? I don't, but some of you do. You turn it upside down and you see what falls out, what blessings have come, right? And she opened the first one and nothing came out. And so she thought, okay, well, there's two more. And so she opened the second one and turned it upside down and nothing fell from the envelope. And she said, well, this last one's going to be tremendous because the boots I got my eye on, man, this, this has to be a blessing. And she, she opened the envelope and, and, and she, there was nothing there. And she said, Lord, I, 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 I prayed. And, and she was discouraged and, and she was cold and, and she knew this was a, was a need, not, not a want. And, and um, so she went about her business and she walked into the office that day and she ran into Larry and Larry said, oh, by the way, I've got a brand new pair of women's boots. Do you know anyone that could use a pair of boots? And she said she felt like Cinderella. <laughs> she put them on and they fit. And she just stood back and she just marveled that, uh, that God knows our needs and that his provisions are more than money, but he knows that which we have need of today. And out of the scripture, Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will meet my needs, all your needs, according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And out of Matthew 6.33, perhaps my favorite verse of all of scripture, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his right living. And all of this, all of these things will be added to you as well. The truth is this morning, friends, that God values each and every one of you. And... Um, he wants to provide, but he also wants us to take steps of faith in regards to receiving that provision. And so if we honor him with our lives, scripture says that he will take care of our needs, right? Amen? Amen. If you're at the end of the row, if you'd reach down and grab that offering bucket today, I'm glad to tell you that March has been much more favorable to us than January and February were. We got behind in January and February. But we're starting to catch up just ever so slightly here in March. And, and we're believing that today, as we continue to move forward, that God will meet the needs of this congregation. So if you bow with me, please, let's pray together. And then we will receive our morning tithe and offering and, and any gifts for ruin. 
uh, ruin that which we partner with um, ministry partners around the world. Uh, you're doing a great job coming along that side. And so your continued gifts as well. Father God, we thank you. We thank you today. That Lord, we know that you meet um, our needs. And God, as we take steps of faith, as we take steps of faith today, that Lord, that we could recognize that uh, your hand is not only on that faith, but your hand is uh, upon our life, our future, and that which we have need of. And so God, as we give today, and as we surrender those things, Lord, we ask for your provision. Father, we also uh, take a moment and pause and remember some, some of the great servants in this congregation today. Lord, we pray specifically for our, our, our administrative board. God, we ask that you would just um, bless them today, that you would honor them, that you would, uh, that today as we have a meeting, that you would give them wisdom and discernment. But Lord, we thank you for their service here in this congregation. And we pray a grace upon their lives as well. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. You may pass it along the row. Fill it up. Fill it up, folks. And uh, we will be there to pick that up. As that is coming along and Usher is picking that up, you heard the announcement for that new support group. You know, these things like bipolar or this um, domestic violence support group that we're beginning our, our 21st century needs that, that the church is able to respond to. And, and you heard the one about uh, being bipolar, but on the 15th of April, there is a support group for women that is beginning and anyone that has been a victim of of abuse of any kind, all right? And that support group will meet from 7 to 9 p.m. for six weeks. And those unevil, uh, un, unable to uh, make the evening hours, they will be a meeting on, uh, in the morning uh, from uh, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. on the Tuesday, all right? And so if you like information about that, you can see Brenda. And there is a cost. There's $10 in that. And that just covers the materials. But those are very, very important things that you need to be aware of couple other things as, uh, as we move forward this morning. Uh, domestic, or uh, the domestic violence, I just did that one, right? How domestic violence and carpenter's hands go together, I don't know. But uh, we've got many projects that have come to us, and, and, and folks, we need some folks to, uh, to respond. Some of you have some projects that have been given to you that, they, they, that those work orders need to be fulfilled. But uh, you need to see uh, Rick today, or you can check in with Bob. And uh, this is their brainchild, and this is something we want to be able to be a blessing to and for uh, in, in our church. And so uh, please make sure you do that today. And you heard about the tamales. We've got Jeannie and Margaret and Zelda. I haven't seen Zelda, but I've seen Jeannie and Margaret this morning. I, morning, Jeannie. Where's Margaret? Is Margaret upstairs? Hi, Margaret. And where's, where's your third partner in crime this morning? I don't see her today. She had to work this morning. All right, they are heading off uh, on a short-term missions trip, and we want to be able to help them. And you can begin that process, not only by praying, but you can do that by purchasing those tamales. You heard that. You can get your pre-order in today. want to make sure that you do that. And uh, Keith, Keith's coming. We never hear from Keith. And uh, Keith is a guy that uh, runs uh, probably sound here about 80%, 90% of the time. And you know how to work one of those, by the way? Very good. All right. It's got two buttons. It's got two buttons. And uh, we talk about script all the time here in this church, and we've only been talking about it for a year and a half, but all of a sudden, Keith figured it out about five, six weeks ago and got really on board. So tell us what you're doing. About four weeks. Okay. So tell us what you're doing. I'm a slow learner. You are a slow learner, but that's all right. You know, you guys look a lot different from this side. (laughs) It's probably true. Maybe I'll go back there and talk. (laughs) No. Last night was easy. Today's scary. Yeah. All right. Chevron Gas, not plugging any gas company, but that's who I prefer. I went home, figured up how much I spend on gas. I spend about two fifty a month. I put it on my credit card. It's because he drives so a get, hybrid, by the way, yes, and so that helps. Right? I drive about two thousand a month. So, figure it up. I put it on my credit card, so I get my rewards. I pay it one time. Buy it from church. I can still get my rewards. The church gets 2.5%. It's not much. 6 625 I think. I haven't done the math. Yeah, I think it's 625 for for 250. But I still get $250 worth of gas. Right. And the church gets 625. The math doesn't add up. All right. There's some folks going to lunch next week, I believe, going to Chili's. Right. Chili's pays 11% back to church. Right. 
11%. And I figured that one up. For a $25 gift card, that's $2.75 that comes to church. That's not a lot of money. Ten of you buy them, mm -hmm. it's over 27 bucks. That's right. It adds up, people. I mean, when you first made the mention of... A uh, million and a half dollars. Yeah, a million dollars. I'm back there kind of rolling my eyes going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I could see those eyes rolling from here, by the way, and I... <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I was unimpressed with that. Thanks for standing with me in faith, but all right. I'll, I will lower my seat from now. <laughs> all right, very good. Um, but no, I, it, mathematically, it finally kicked in. And I did find out this morning, um, Kohl's, you know, it's income tax return time. I pay in more to the government every year so that I can get vacation money. Well, this year, it's not vacation money. I need new clothes. Kohl's pays 9% back to the church. Right. So if I do $300, that's what? Nine times three, 27 bucks that comes to the church. And I still get $300 worth of clothes. That's right. How can you go wrong? There's a big list of a whole lot of stuff on here. Right. All you got to do is look at it and figure it out. There's some, some other things. Anybody wants uh, Costco? I mean, that place is too crowded for me, but that pays 20% back to the church. That's, that's on only, membership. Only for the new membership. That's though. on membership, right. Just the, just the new membership. So if you're not a member and you want to be, buy it through the church. That's right. Um, so what you're saying that, is, with some careful planning, that uh, you can do everything that you need to do, but be a great blessing to the church. And that's what folks are beginning to do. And, you know, we figured out if we had 100 families just participating this way, that million and a half dollars that we talk about, we knock that out, no problem. And that brings about $100,000 into both our kids' and children's ministries. And that fully underwrites both departments, completely. And uh, what an amazing thing. And so, folks, you just need to be thinking ahead. So thanks, Keith, for coming along lately. Just but, got uh, it. huh? The million and a half dollars, I just got it. You just You're talking about a million and a half through there. Gross. I thought you was talking about a million and a half in the percentage. No, 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 no. That's why I rolled my eyes. Oh, good cover. Very good. Thanks, bro. Thanks. Nice cover. Nice cover. All right. You ever wonder if something's worth it? When I was in college, I had so many jobs. Sometimes I worked two jobs at once. Other times I didn't have any jobs. And when it came to summer, I was scrambling, right? And I had this friend whose father was a commercial painter, and they had a very large government contract, and they had to get into this military base in a matter of two weeks, in and out. And we were charged with painting the whole base from inside and out. And so he called me one day, he says, Jeff, do you need a job? And I went, absolutely. He says, can you paint? I said, I think so. And he said, great, you're hired. And I thought, that's the best interview I've done in a long time, right? I remember getting there, and, and there was hundreds of guys being ready to work, and my friend said, okay, Jeff, what I want you to do is I want you to prep the ceilings. Oh, folks, have you ever worked with your hands above your head the whole time, right? Within 15 minutes of doing this job, I was saying, this isn't worth it. This, ha this is a pain. This is hard work. I am exhausted. Is it lunch yet? I mean, I was going down the list. I was complaining and everything else. And it was, it was a terrible, terrible experience. I just thought I couldn't do it anymore. Have you ever been there in life where you just thought this isn't worth it? Every now and again, we'll feel like throwing in the towel, right? But when we throw in the towel, the problem is sometimes we look back with regret and saying, and we say something like this, if I'd only continued on, or if I'd only pushed through that. And sometimes, you know, we, in living with regret, it's one of those things that we just wish that someone was there to kind of, right? Well, this morning, here it is. And, and oftentimes, even with the, with, the, with the things of God, like turning the other cheek or loving your neighbor as yourself or forgiving someone, sometimes those are things that we, things that we go, oh, that's just not worth it to me. That's just too hard. Or I don't want to do that. Or, you know what, that, that's just, you know, I, I, I'm on to the bigger things of God. I am so thankful that out of Matthew chapter 21, the things that, or this chapter that we've been looking at for the last few weeks, 
Um, I'm so important that these guys did not throw in the towel in regards to this assignment. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 21. We'll begin reading in verse 1, Matthew 21, verse 1. It's also coming up on the screens, and it says this. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Verse 6, and this is, the, this is your memory verse this week. It's an odd one, but it's, it, 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 it just plays out what we're talking about today. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. The Lord brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and, and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. You know, this, this simple little scene reminds me of the parable of being faithful with little and how it creates a pathway to being given more responsibility. And folks, I've come to learn that there are no small or meaningless, meaningless tasks in the kingdom of God. Just opportunities so that we can be faithful, so that He can do something wonderful through it. You know, we have some things coming up, and you heard it in the, the announcements that Margaret made over, over by video you know, we've got some egg stuffing coming up, and you're going, well, I don't know if I'm qualified for egg stuffing, but, um, but I, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I can do a crash course and be a part of that, or, or, or even preparing the kids' craft for Easter. I mean, these are things, these are opportunities, and what a blessing. And, and sometimes we go, well, somebody else can do that, or, or somebody else can, can come alongside and, 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 and receive my blessing because I'm not going to do that. Or even this idea of inviting or, or bringing one is uh, maybe we go, you know, I'll let somebody else do that. And, and what I want to challenge you with today is that these things are worth it. These opportunities to serve are tremendous opportunities to see that God takes that which you do and he blows it up in a powerful way. And that's what I love. Sometimes God just absolutely awes us by our simple obedience. Have you ever done something and you just felt like you had to step out in faith and as you did it, man, God did something so neat and you're just like, ah, you felt great. And then other times you do something, you feel like God has called you to do it and you recognize that nobody else saw it and nothing great came out of it that you could see and all that you are left with the f- is the feeling of knowing that you've done something right. Both are equally true. Sometimes God comes along and he just, man, he makes a parade out of it. And other times, we are left to to grow in the experience and to recognize that God is maturing our soul and that we do not do everything for applause, but we do it because it's for kingdom. And in this scene, as in so many scenes of Scripture, when you read through, especially the Old Testament, man, when when those, those people would take those steps of faith, you know, they would be in awe of what God would do when those steps of faith were taken, right? And, 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 and they would see things you know, come into fruition before their own eyes. And, and if, you watch, if you're watching the Bible series on the, on the History Channel, you also see how that works the other way. You know, last week they spent a lot of time in talking about Samson, right? And we see that his bad decisions led to something else, a destructive thing that happened in, in his life. And it goes both ways. It goes both ways. But I love the fact that these two disciples, they go, they grab these two animals, and they bring them to Jesus, and they begin to prepare them for Jesus to sit on 
uh, on one of them. And then now people are coming out from the neighborhoods and everything else. And they're, and they're taking off their outer garments or their cloaks. And they're laying them on the road. And they're ripping palm branches from their neighbor's trees. And, and they're laying them out, right? Because they don't want to wreck their trees. But they put them out. And they put them out on the road. And they begin this song, right? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And there's rejoicing. And it's an instant party. And no way those guys thought that was going to happen when they went and grabbed those two animals. That was not in their purview of thinking. Sometimes, though, we, we think that, oh, that only happens to really spiritual people. Or that only happens, you know, once in a lifetime. That maybe only happens uh, to, you know, in this room. Maybe it's going to happen to one person. But for the most part, that doesn't happen. First of all, folks, I want, I want you to stop and, and, and recognize, please do not disqualify yourself. Please do not disqualify yourself because when you begin to walk in obedience, God does good stuff. God does God stuff. And God's stuff is bigger than your stuff. Sorry about that, but it's true. Right? And I'm happy about that because God's stuff is always way better than my stuff. Right? I don't know about your stuff, but it's better than my stuff. And you know, when we do that, God does great stuff, but sometimes we go, oh, I'm just such a loser. Or that doesn't work for me. Or, and we go on these pity parties and, you know, and we start singing, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. <laughs> nobody knows my sorrow. I mean, they just we do all that stuff and it's, wow, woe is me. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> You know how I fought that? I really didn't think I should say that, but anyways. <laughs> Stop listening to the lie of the enemy in your life. There is no menial task in the kingdom of God. There is nothing. And you know, every now and again, God will take that which was small and he'll blow it up. And all of a sudden, you're standing at the parade route going, oh my goodness, look at this. This is incredible. Now, the flip side is also true, that we don't want to immediately disqualify ourselves from this, but the other side is that we don't get so, oh, I can't do that. God only does the big stuff through me. Oh, come on, folks. You know, when we begin to live that way, then God has a funny way of finding ways to humble us. So if you want to save yourself a little bit of Holy Spirit grief, then you might just want to be humble and move in that direction. So... I see this scene out of Matthew chapter 21 and it makes me shake my head because who could have seen this coming? You know, it's possible, it's possible that somewhere along the way you have missed an opportunity to serve, right? I have. And in that opportunity, you missed, an, uh, you missed that chance to be absolutely awed by what God would do. And sometimes we delay our faith. You know, some of you are very spontaneous, and that means that you have no money in the bank because you spend it, all right? But often you respond to the promptings of the Lord much quicker than people like me that are very, very calculated and planned and, and take five years to buy anything right? And that's kind of the way I, I, I do things. I, 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 I'm very slow, and because of that, uh, sometimes I miss out on that which God is asking me to do in that immediate. And I'll go, eh, I gotta think about that. And sometimes God's going, don't think about it, just go. <laughs> you know what that reminded me of? Do you remember the Wizard of Oz and the little guys? <laughs> that was a Wizard of Oz moment right there, wasn't it? <laughs> and you should all follow the yellow brick road. That's right. <laughs> Folks, what I'm getting at is, sometimes in our personality types, depending on your personality type, there can be a challenge in responding in obedience to what God wants you to do. Sometimes you have to fight the circumstance or you have to fight the way you process or fight the way that you normally go about things. And for others of you that are completely spontaneous, sometimes you have to stand back for a moment and say, is this really from God? Right? Because there's that side too. Sometimes we are so, oh, I'll do that. We don't even think about it. And all of a sudden we end up somewhere and we go, how did I get here? This isn't what was supposed to happen. And so we need to find a balance there. We need to recognize that, that um, you know, we don't listen to the lies of the enemy, but at the same time, we use, um, 
we use discretion and, and we use that we do, we do not allow the failings of our own heart to trip us up. In Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 1, we, we, we see this story that I don't think I've ever, ever preached on it. I probably taught on it a few times when I was teaching Sunday school to little kids. But this is a Sunday school story for whatever reason. There is a hated man, a hated wealthy man, by the way, but he is hated. And beginning at verse 1, it says this, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of... Remember this? How many remember Zacchaeus who was the wee little man? The wee little man was he. He climbed up into the tree to see what he could see. Something like that, right? Sycamore tree, right? Yeah. So we get the visual that this is a small guy. He is challenged height-wise. And he is hated. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy, according to the Scripture. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. And I like, I like that, the imagery here, that sometimes the crowd gets in the way of us seeing, right? What we need to see. And here, his, his deficiency is he's already a little height challenged, and so he runs ahead out of verse 4, right? He ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see, to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house. Okay, now first of all, so you're hiding, or not hiding, you're up in a tree, right? You're trying to get above the crowd, and, and maybe people see you, maybe they don't, but all of a sudden Jesus stops, and he looks up at you and goes, Zacchaeus! Now, if I'm Zacchaeus, I'm going, uh-oh. <laughs> Come on, right? Isn't that your first? Oh, this is bad. He's not addressed anybody else on the route today. Uh-oh. And so, yes, I'm coming to your house. Wow. Okay, that's different. This isn't a reprimand from the principal. This is not, you know, getting shouted down. He has just invited himself over. Oh, my. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he, mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. You know, I think we've all sinned, right? I think we, we've all done that. Yeah, okay. We just wanted to establish that we're, we, we've all messed up. But Zacchaeus stood up, and I don't know if anyone noticed because he was so short, but he stood up and... <laughs> And he said to the Lord, Lord, look, or look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. He's wealthy. So now he is going to distribute half of his wealth to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. Do you not think something happened amazing in this moment that just filled him with awe? All he wanted to do was see Jesus. And not only did he see Jesus, but Jesus made such an impression upon his life that all of a sudden everything changed in that moment for him. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. Now, responding to the promptings of, and urgings of God in our life produces life in us and this is the case with Zacchaeus right and he was looking for it and he discovered that it was worth his time he discovered that it was worth his effort to run ahead he could not see over the crowd so he recognized that if he wanted to participate then he needed to be uh, proactive and he moved ahead and folks, I can assure you today that some of the people that you are praying for and bringing one and, and having them participate with us over the Easter weekend, you know, the Holy Spirit is working on their heart and they are beginning to look ahead. They want to discover the Savior. They don't know what that fully looks like yet, but Jesus is going to call them by name and He's going to do an amazing work in their life. But sometimes we go, I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if really my invite, if it's really going to make any difference at all. And folks, I got to tell you that a simple invite makes all the difference in the world and it can change the destiny of a person's life and can change a whole family. So we were driving home from service last night. Donna reminded me of the man that knocked on my father's door when he was a kid, about 16 years of age. 
there was a traveling evangelist that would come through town, and my, my family was not a church-going family. They weren't believers. Single mom back in, in a, it, well, it was a tough time. They were a very, very poor family, and this guy comes to the house, knocks on the door, and he's the guy that just about a block and a half down is building a tent, putting a tent up, and he comes to the door and he asks for a glass of water. And, you know, those were the days where we actually opened the door and, 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 they, and, and they gave him a glass of water and he very simply said, I'm holding a meeting tonight in the tent. It's a gospel meeting. Why don't you come? A simple invite. And you know what? My dad went to that meeting that night and he gave his heart to Jesus. A simple invite. Folks, Is it worth it? Yes. Because then he went home and he brought his mother the next night and she gave her heart to Jesus. And then the other brothers and the sister came and they gave their heart to Jesus. And that whole family from that time on has been in ministry. And literally their lives have been about touching thousands upon thousands and thousands of people around the world. Do you think that simple invite's worth it? Yes. Can God take it and make it something much bigger than you ever dreamed of? Oh yeah, baby. And He wants to. He wants to. But you know, sometimes we go, I don't know if it's worth it. Oh, I don't know how to say it. Or I don't know what I'm going to do. Folks, we have to get beyond that and stop disqualifying ourselves and recognize that God has called us for a time such as this. But it's not only the one that needs to come to faith that will be awed by the change, but it's also... It's also those that are in faith, that as God continues to grow them and move them and mature them and, and mold them into His image, that, that they will continue to be awed. In John chapter 1, we see the calling of the first disciples, and John the Baptist has his own disciples, right? And in this scene, this is the second day that Jesus has come by, and we'll pick up the reading here at verse 30, 35, and it says this out of John chapter 1, the next day, John was there again with two of his disciples, and this is John the Baptist. And when he saw Jesus passing by, and I love the imagery here, John's ministry is winding down, and Jesus' ministry is ramping up. Right? This is what's happening. And it's, it's a cool little scene. And John recognizes that, and he says, look, the Lamb of God. He's speaking to his two disciples. Look, you guys, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, They followed Jesus. What happens here is that in that moment, John the Baptist recognizes that he needs to move them forward. He is nudging them forward in God's plan. And we don't know it, and they don't know in that moment what's going to come out of it, but they're moving forward in obedience. When the two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus, right? Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, so they're not just following Jesus they're stalking Jesus all right they're walking on his heels and he turns around and what's interesting these are the first words recorded of Jesus in scripture now he's not been a mute for the last 30 some years these are just the first words that we have and record of him and he says what do you want or probably put better what is it that you seek and they said rabbi hmm. have you ever had someone that you were kind of nervous to talk to, and all of a sudden they talk to you, and you're like, God. Gah. Gah. Nice hair. You know, you say stupid stuff, right? Oh, I really like your, your fancy left eyeball. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you too. Nice chatting with you. Let's do this again sometime. Woo! That went great. <laughs> you kidding? And so these disciples, this is kind of the scene, and they go, uh, where are you staying? Where are you staying, Jesus? And Jesus says, come, he replied, and you will see. Uh, God's going to open their eyes to something remarkable. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about the 10th hour. Now, we're introduced to Andrew. Andrew is Simon Peter's brother. Most of us forget that Peter has a brother, but it's Andrew. And Andrew was uh, one of the two who had heard what John had said. In other words, 
John says to Andrew, go, look, the Lamb of God, you need to go. And Andrew is one of these two disciples and he begins to follow. And, um, and he was one who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is, when translated, is Peter. Do you think Andrew or Peter had any idea what their life was about to become? They were already seeking after the Messiah. They were already diligent disciples, disciples of John in Andrew's case, waiting and and knowing that John was preparing the way for the Messiah to come and diligently looking and Andrew comes and Andrew does a very interesting thing. He's the first one to verbalize that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the very first one to, to verbalize this, that we have this in, in, in written form. And he does that. And not only does he verbalize it, but he goes and he gets his brother, Peter. This is the same Peter that will deny Jesus three times. Can you imagine, had Andrew not gone? See, what I'm getting at, folks, is sometimes we, 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 we neglect the opportunity that's right before us. Because we go, ah, it's not worth it. Or I'm not so sure. Or I don't have the time to do that. Or I don't want to do that today. But folks, Andrew in obedience goes out and he introduces his brother Peter to Jesus. And Jesus looks at him and he declares over his life that he is going to be something amazing in the kingdom. It's an amazing scene. But it's one of those scenes that begins with I don't know what God's going to do. I don't know what God is going to um, produce out of this. I don't know what God is going to do when he meets uh, Peter. But regardless, I'm going to do it. Folks, do you know that there just may be people in your way today that are waiting to be introduced to Jesus? Do you recognize that there are opportunities in your path today? There are opportunities to be able to respond so that God can do an incredible miracle and He wants you to be a part of that thing. I think that's an amazing thing that God wants to partner with us in this way. I think it's an amazing thing that God sees that that we have value. And sometimes you and I wonder that, that we don't have value. Folks, I've got to tell you that every one of us has value. Now, the problem is sometimes we, uh, or in some of our context or situation or family, we didn't grow up in a supportive family or, or we didn't have people that were encouraging even. But do not allow those situations to negate the good thing that God wants to accomplish in your life every time you surrender to the Lord's prompting in your life. I know that there's been times where you've responded and you thought, did that, was it, did that do anything? You will not know all of that which your obedience will produce here on earth, but I believe somehow you will be rewarded for that obedience one day before God the Father. As you begin to move and you, you just step out in faith and as you allow the promptings of the Holy Spirit in your life, this is the most exciting thing that can happen. And we shouldn't always be working for the accolades or that which comes back to us, but we need to be looking and storing up treasure in heaven. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Heaven, are you going there? Are you going there one day? According to the word, by his incredible grace, he's going to allow me in. That's mind-blowing to me. And that came because someone knocked on the door of my dad's house and asked for a glass of water. What is God asking you to do today? You know, sometimes I go, well, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm just going to wait. And I'll see what big thing God brings my way. You know what? Again, when we are faithful with that which is little, then he opens up the pathway to being more involved in the more. 
And what happens too is that we often put a parameter on stuff with God. And, and, and I get that, but sometimes you feel like you've got to bake a pie for the kingdom, but all that comes out is brownies. <laughs> and you know what? That's okay. Because, you know, God will allow you along and, and see you going forward and everything else. But sometimes it won't turn out that way. And especially youth, I hear youth all the time going, oh, I really tried, Pastor Jeff, and, and I, I just thought God was going to do this. And you know what? God is still working. It may not work out the way that we think it should work out, right? You've ever been there? Sure you have. But just because it doesn't work out wasn't what God hadn't had planned all along. And because of that, we shouldn't be worried that it doesn't come out like a pie. That which you do for the Lord does not have to align with that which you think. But it will align with His kingdom purposes and we need to rejoice in that and we need to stand back for just a moment and go, wow. Wowza, wowza, wowza. That is awesome. Because God's plans are greater than my own, amen, it means that it is worth it. It's absolutely worth it. As you know, we've been building and believing for the greatest Easter in our recent history. And we're very excited. Easter's two weeks from today, right? And there's a lot to go on. But folks, I believe that as we've intentionally um, positioned ourselves to be light in darkness, as, as, as we've been asking you to provide names for us to, to, to pray for, that they would see, that they would discover God, that they would see Jesus this Easter and, 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 and come to faith in Christ, I, I believe that you know, when we try to take enemy territory, he's never just like, oh yeah, go ahead and take that. I just believe that there is a bit of a war going on with some of the stuff that is trying to get going here this Easter. You know, and scripture says that the war isn't, isn't necessarily physical, but it's a spiritual battle that's going on. And I believe there is a spiritual battle going on for the hearts and lives of everyone. And even those that know the Lord, they have a choice every day as to who they're going to serve. And so I believe that there is a war going on, and I believe right now with some of, the, some, of the, just <laughs> some of our plans, and we'll talk to you more about it next week, but some of our plans are being greatly challenged. And folks, it's time for pushback. We need to push back. We need to pray. We need to, we, we need to be diligent with that which God has put in front of us to do, be obedient with. When we see the, that even though it may be small, just responding in such a way. I just know that any great victory in my life just always came with a bit of a fight, right? I think I must have asked Donna a hundred times to marry me before I wore her down, <laughs> right? But that was worth the fight. And folks, there are things in your life, especially spiritually, where you're just going to have to go to war a little bit, and you're going to have to fight for it, and you're going to have to believe for it. You say, well, I prayed about that when I was three. Well, don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Now, that's not even a Christian song, but it just fit in that moment, didn't it? Sure wish I could sing like that guy, right? Oh, man. All right. Anyways. Why do we give up? We don't, we don't give up. That's what Scripture says. Don't give up. Keep fighting, keep pressing on. And we've got two weeks to Easter. And this list here represents hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of names that you've given us of people that we're praying for. And maybe you've forgotten already, but we haven't. We haven't. And because we're praying, I kind of half expect that their life is going to be miserable for the next two weeks. You, you can go ahead and apologize on our behalf. But sometimes that's what happens. Has that ever happened to you? And so we're praying because we believe that's where it begins. You know, I'm very, very thankful that, that in this past year the church, has, the church has grown. We've grown by about roughly 11% and that's a great thing. Because that means that's great commission. We are, we are called to grow. We are called to go into all the world. That is great commission. That is our mission. We are to grow. And that's, that's the deal. And I was saying to Pastor Ron the other day, and he came into my office, and I said, hey, Pastor Ron, what do you think if we grew by 100 people this Easter? And he kind of looked at me, and, you know, 
Pastor Ron's kind of the, the sage around the office, and sometimes he's got to hold my feet to the ground, and other times he's got to kick them and get them off the ground, and he does both very well. And, and he looks at me and says, and he doesn't want to dampen my enthusiasm, that thinking that we could believe or for a hundred folks just to, 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 to come in and be a part of this body. Because you see, folks, it's not just people that don't know the Lord. You know what? You know all kinds of people that just aren't in church that used to be, right? All kinds of people. We could fill this church a hundred times over with that crowd alone. And you need to invite them. And they need to be a part. And I am praying that when people come in over Easter weekend, they, they would feel the presence of God. And that there would be people sitting in these, in, these, in these chairs and they will just begin to weep because they will sense the anointing of the Lord and the calling of God upon their life and the calling home to take that step back in faith. Maybe they had a bad experience. Anyone ever had a bad experience? I've had plenty. I've been in the church my whole life and I've seen it all. But folks, i got to tell you that when the Holy Spirit shows up, an amazing thing begins to happen. He melts and softens our heart to that which He wants to say. And that's what I believe will happen this Easter. But it will not happen unless you participate in that which God is calling us to do, His mission, and to get the Word out. Oh, that wasn't enthusiastic enough. You can do this. Because immediately you're going, I don't know. Don't disqualify yourself from that which God wants to do. He will blow you away. I want you to go ahead and take out your connection card. And Have you ever thought why you're here today? Who invited you to church that you came and you gave your life to Jesus? Have you ever thought about that? How you came? You know, for some of you, you may just want to make a call today and say thank you to somebody for inviting you, for believing, right? If you're our guest today, thank you so much for being here on the front side of the card. It place there for your name and your address. We're not going to call you. We promise we won't. But we will send you an email and a, and a letter and, and some other things. And we really just, we believe that we, this is an opportunity for us to connect with you. And so we appreciate that very much. And so we want to connect with you. Also, if, uh, if you're a, a regular attender or a member we appreciate your, your status updates. And if someone brought you today, if you would write their name, because we just, we want to say thank you to them too, right? I think that's very, very important. On the back side, I want you to see a few things. First thing says, I want to, and perhaps it's take your first step with Jesus today. Jesus turns around and looks at the two disciples following him and says, what do you want? And what they wanted was relationship with the Messiah. Maybe that's your desire today. You recognize that today is your day to have a relationship with the Messiah. We have a baptismal service coming up on the 6th. That's the week after Easter. And if you would like to be involved in that, if you check that off, we will have a special class at 9 a.m. on that Sunday. You need to come prepared. You need to come bringing your clothes that are going to get wet and all that kind of stuff. But we'll have baptism on that Sunday. But let us know if you'd like to be baptized. We also begin a new members class on that Sunday. It's working over four weeks. It's on Sunday mornings beginning at 9.30 for 25 minutes for four consecutive weeks, all right? And then again, just a reminder, bring one. Don't come to Easter by yourself. Bring one with you. Bring one with you. We have many different service options that weekend. I want you to take advantage of them all. But your next step in this immediate, you have your memory verse there. I've also provided extra reading and let me spoil the surprise. All that extra reading is about the calling of disciples. The calling of those that are already faithful and devout in some of these cases. And what God does by their obedience. And I want you to look at these three things with me. Number one, I will position myself to hear God's invitation. That's what Zacchaeus did. He got away from the crowd. He got away from the noise. And he got to a place where he could see the Savior coming. And he responded to the invitation in the immediate. Secondly, I will not be closed off 
to being awed by God. See, folks, we should expect that God does God's stuff in the lives of our family and friends that we're praying for. I, I read your, your, your prayer cards each and every week. We get uh, 15, 16 sheets of these with multiples on each page. And every week, you are praying for a loved one. You're praying for a husband that's away from Jesus. You're praying for a, a child that is no longer serving the Lord. Folks, I stand fully on the promise. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. I stand on that word out of Proverbs. It doesn't mean that they're not going to go crazy for that interim period. Didn't promise no craziness. It just says that there's going to come a time in their life where that which is planted in their heart will bear fruit and they'll come to a decision. But there's things that we're praying about all the time and we're praying with you. And like you, we see some of the repeated messages each and every week. You're still praying. Well, we want you to know we're still praying with you. Because I know you can get tired in praying for someone to come to the Lord. So we continue to pray with you that it can happen, all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Last thing, I will be confident of God's order. I will be confident of God's order. Sometimes we think God needs to operate in just a certain way. And when He doesn't, we get disappointed. Folks, I'm here to tell you that we need to be confident in that which the Lord is doing. I'm going to invite you to uh, stand with us as we sing together. and We're going to collect these connection cards in closing in just a moment but I want to encourage you to stand with us as we as we sing together folks there is no small task those two disciples went out and they found a couple of animals and Jesus came riding in on a parade route and they started to sing frontwards and backwards blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna 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 it's an amazing thing why don't you sing with us God bless you all who are thirsty, okay. all who are weak, come to yeah, the fountain, the stem, dip, the fountain. dip your heart in the streams of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away. of his mercy as deep cries out to deep we sing
collect those connection cards if you pass those along the aisle there will be someone there to pick that up thank you for doing that for us so that's going on this week on our prayer app we had our finally broke into South America and Chile so we started to see some of these prayers come to us in Spanish what was cool is last night Someone posted a prayer in the Middle East, and I have no idea what they're praying about. My neighbor's Middle Eastern. I'm going to take it to him this afternoon and see if he can help me with that. It's amazing, folks. It's amazing. And that's what God does. Simple obedience, and He takes it, and He makes it amazing. He wants to do that in your life. He wants to do that in your service. He wants you to do that in your ongoing journey with Christ. He wants to take it, make it amazing, and do amazing stuff through it. Stuff beyond what you could have ever imagined or dreamed. That's what He wants to do. He wants to use you. And don't disqualify yourself and don't get a big head about it. It's just what He wants to do. And He wants to use you. What an honor. He is honoring you today. Even if you have worshipped, He is honoring you today with opportunity before you. Amazing. But maybe someone in this crowd today is more like Zacchaeus. That just, you just want to see, you just, you just want to discover who Christ is. And, and, and you're here today and, and you recognize that you don't yet have this relationship with Jesus. You, see, you, you don't feel that invitation or you haven't asked for that invitation for him to come in. But today is your day. You feel like today is the day I, I, I believe that, that Jesus wants to come into my life. And you know what? For most of the people in this room, we've had that day. But maybe for you, this is your day. Is that anybody in this crowd today? Today is your day to invite Jesus in. Is there anybody? I'm looking around. 
looking around. You just raise your hand real quick. Just see if I can see it, all right? It's a rare Sunday where this doesn't happen, but gives us something to be praying about each and every week. Is there, it's going to take another moment. I'm going to invite my prayer friends to come at this time. We count it an honor and a privilege to pray over those needs and those concerns that you come walking in with. And we don't want you to walk out heavy and feeling like, oh man, I, I needed to meet Jesus, but I didn't have a chance. Here's your chance again. Here's another chance today to discover that God wants to do something awesome in your life. And He wants to begin to move in your situation. And it may not blow up and be amazing all in that moment. But He will provide for you those steps and those things where you can begin to see that His grace, His power is amazing. Father God, I thank You for each and every one today. And Lord, for those that will be coming for prayer here in just a moment. I ask, Lord, that that You would just continue to prepare their hearts even for this prayer time in our closing today. That You would do amazing things in their lives. And Lord, as we then exit this building there are many things that need our attention there are tamales that we need to take care of so we can we can help people get to the mission field there are there are things that we need to sign up for events coming and all that type of stuff and there are script sales now you're getting it and all that stuff it's all out there too but god for your kingdom good all of it in jesus name if you're coming for prayer would you begin to come this way God bless, God bless you folks. Thanks for being here today. We'll see you again soon.
Just rise my soul, rest in